Let's go this through again. Okay, double transfuse, you're at 5 HP. Ice Shard Nexus at 3. MF passive 1. Ice Shard 2. Unit hits 3. Yeah, GG. Gorgeous. Disciple hyper carry, let's go. <laughs> My opponent kind of killed themselves in a way there. Is it the Mustache? Who knows? What's up, YouTube, and welcome to Vladimir Brom Scargrounds. Now, the archetype itself is nothing new, it's been around for a while, but it's always been stamped off as a meme, at least for the most part, it only shined in very certain metas. And I do feel like right now is one of those metas where this deck is actually somewhat competitive. The main reason being this, the meta-defining deck is Ari Cannon, consisting of a lot of 1 HP units. Our deck is very effective at taking care of 1 HP units. Ice Shard helps a lot, Ember Maiden helps a lot. We could even consider tacking in some Death Lotus or Blighted Ravine. Now, the interesting part is the whole meta resolves around trying to have okay matchups into Ari Cannon, and that means a lot of those decks also play 1 damage pings. Feel the Rush is popular, or Nivea Control, uh, Darkness plays a lot of pings, Gohards, Withering Wells, and so on. Decks like Sentinel Control, Spooky Karma, generally Shadow Eyes Control plays a lot of uh, Vile Feast and Withering Wales. And at the same time, we're even okay into some burn decks trying to counter Ari Cannon. Like, for example, Spiders have a lot of 1 HP units, they also just kind of fall prey. But generally speaking, our Bird matchups aren't that great, and our matchups against Pantheon decks, for example, aren't that great. Apart from that, though, we have pretty good matchups into most control decks, into a lot of mid range decks as well, because we play very well statted units as well as super effective combat tricks, as in Trojan Transfusion. And especially if we have Scar Grounds, that Ice Shard becomes a combat trick, grows our board, as in making it stronger while also protecting our units by giving it tough. And we also can uh, put out a significant amount of burn damage with a Vladimir passive with the disciple passive as well as imperial demolitionist so we can also close out games fairly quickly and sometimes outrace burn decks or stall them off early on and then go over the top quickly if you're not familiar with this deck yet just a very brief introduction the deck is basically centered around uh, the scar grounds and a self-damaging effects ideally not only self-damaging but damaging the whole board which means we remove our opponent's units while we buff our own units our units can grow to pretty insane numbers and they become sturdy through the tough keywords and insane attack numbers are important on our overwhelm units like scar mother of Rena, like brahm's mighty poro and you could even consider attacking in ruthless raiders but a lot of other units also benefit from self wooding effects disciple i already mentioned is direct burn damage crimson curator is basically like a draw engine generating more cards legion veteran doubles down on the scar grounds effect or can be parts of a scar ground if we don't find it vrena of course is the most obvious case of having a huge payoff for being damaged and brom can be pretty nice to spawn poros or to get a quicker level up as well and what i would say makes this deck kind of shine in the current meta is the inclusion of ember maiden that's so annoying to deal with for a lot of ari cannon decks and keep in mind that if ember maiden gets played after scar grounds is on the board is she stays she gets the tough keyword doesn't kill herself off anymore and just keeps on damaging the whole board as well as the nexus so in its core this is a pretty classic mid-range deck we don't have the strongest early games in turns one two three but after we get Scargrounds online from turn, let's say turns 5, 6, 7, 8 is where we really get our combos rolling and our payoffs like Vladimir's passive, Ice Shard mid combat after we already built a board and so on. But what makes this different from other mid-range decks that are around right now is the effective AoE removal it provides as well as some interesting interactivity. If we run into a lot of Pantheon and so on, we can also tech in more three sisters. There are a lot of tech choices available with this deck. Feel free to try some different tech choices, but in its core this should be very solid. Props to Sparkling Ice Tea, the brilliant deck builder from Germany. And I've had a lot of fun while climbing with this on the ladder. And I want to share some gameplay examples with you. Alright, Ember Maidens should do magic here. 
But we really do hope for a Scar Grounds. Um, I'm not sure if we keep Maiden if we don't have Scar Grounds. Same for Ice Shard, it can just get nopified. Like, Maiden would be better. I guess we can still keep a Maiden. Might catch our opponent off guard. It's also still pretty good with Crimson Discipline, Curator. Braum. Solid. Okay, we can go for a nice fast opening. Can attack with this since it just dies to Curator any okay. Uh not to Curator to Maiden. I think I like this pre-combat. It's just good pressure. Since our opponent's probably gonna try to swing with Ari, maybe it's not bad to have Omen Hawk as a blocker. Here's our chance. Rom's quite okay. Coming is pretty good for my opponents. Wanna see these moves up close? Now who's got the upper hand? Underestimate me. I dare you. Just hoping my opponent tries to swarm the board now. Nice. Play this first, that's kind of a soft pass. Maybe we get a droplet. Nice. That was huge. I kinda gotta go for the kill at the start of next turn. GG's. Yeah, the Maiden would have helped us a lot no matter what our opponent does. Even if they just try to remove her, they go for a stun, we can go um, Elixir. They have to play something like Cannon's Lightning Rush, and they tap out of mana, don't have blockers left. Again, if we find Scar Grounds, this should be a good one. Apart from that, eh, we might struggle. Nice. Like we bank mana. We can play this and pass turn two. Could send it in. It's a bit bad against a Verosen sentry. Oh, what scar grounds should be plenty. We'll play the second one a bit later. There. 
They swing, it's probably worth a troll shard. And again, I can also just ice shard next turn. I feel like Tavern Keeper would have already been played. Again, I don't know how people think in NA Platinum, but... Usually this should clear the way for an attack. Catalyst? Not really, right? It's too much damage to click end round. I mean, my opponent had 16. Why not just play Catalyst? Either way, was probably still worth it with that amount of that damage. King of Trolls, yeah, okay. Vlad should just close out the game. Block this, right? Oh no, Vive. No, wait, Vive Feast doesn't care. Try to close out the game on the open attack. There is no real reason to. Play Maiden, we lose to Ruination. We open attack. Oh god, it's Vengeance, really. Three passive damage. That letter goes through. Open attack should generally be better. If we had more cards to redevelop the board, then it would be a different story. No, like even if our opponents survives this attack with stuff like vengeance, we could Tronde, which means we probably don't lose next turn. We get another attack. What? Oh, the greed. Uh, the freaking greed. Even if they have Vile Feast on their own Shrunda, we can play Maiden, it's lethal. Well, they can Vile Feast Vladimir as well. Bye bye. Oh, what's a greedy fear? I guess maybe it makes sense though. Maybe our opponent was thinking, okay, if I don't win on my next attack, then I'm definitely dead on the subsequent one. So they had to take the risk, maybe. Let the flames take you. Depends on what their hand looks like. Yeah, Skygrounds is kind of fun in this match, I'm not gonna lie. GG's. <laughs> Interesting choice of champions. Let's just be a new account and they have a bit of everything. How good is Ice Shard? How good is Vladimir, actually? Tag token on turn 5. Our only source of healing in the deck, but it requires us to have Snowball the board lead. I think it's too greedy. This sure shirt could be good. You are so dead.
Okay, open attack, they develop, we play Ice Shard. Not sure if we have the time to play Scar Grounds. We got a Mystic Shot? What? Spicy. In that case. Opponent will be tempted to develop next round. I'm not sure if they will do it. It's not bad. Unfortunate. Routes closed. Taking three more damage here. Probably a very burn heavy deck. They play all the burn, it's still scary for us. The earliest will heal is turn seven. Sure. Is that even worth it? Maybe it is. You must be Lord okay, turn 7 we should end the game anyway. We just need to survive until then. Like our opponent's not holding enough burn. I hate having to put my face on. We'll take what we want. The rest will burn. Oh, the yeah, Rinna can one-shot my opponent next round. Nice. Might be a fervor though. I need Rinna to end the game, I can just Ping her with Transfusion, Vladimir levels, Attack, Ice Shard. That will be lethal. I could play around Might by switching them, but then I'm also not closing out the game next round. Oh, he's already leveled. Okay. Well, I should have put uh, Ice Shard on the stack first. I think that's actually the best play because then the healing resolves before we damage ourselves. Just in case my opponent's hand is full burn. Like double fervor mystic shot, something like that. Might make a difference. GG though. I'll raise the burn deck. Uh, MFGP, Ice Shard. I don't know about Ice Shard if we already have a one drop. If it's a rear guard, we definitely want Ice Shard. It's probably one of the better finds, isn't it? You can also combo it with Ember Maiden, maybe. Or two. <laughs> Perfect. 
Now we need to find a Braum and we're good to go. Like in bird matchup, I don't know if we even have enough time to play Scarry Grounds. We might have to either outvalue our opponent, make them run out of cards in hand, or outrace them without Scarry Grounds. Depends a bit on how fast their opening is as well. It's a no-no from me. If we attack now, uh, we give them an extra Gangplank trigger. Good top deck. Maiden and blocking with Maiden isn't too bad. Right now the AoE wouldn't really be good. Not quite what we're looking for, but this might come in handy later on. Maiden can level up Vladimir. Oh, perfect. That's why I waited a bit with this Maiden. And we do want to level Vladimir on our turn 6 attack to heal back up, for sure. Make it rain is not too bad for them. Okay, if they play GP, we have a blocker. Two blockers. Do I protect Vladimir with the elixir? Oof. And that sucks. I guess I have to keep this alive so that MF can't swing and I'll just replay Vladimir next turn. The issue is I don't think I get the level up. Oh wait, he does level. Oh wow, I, I don't even think my opponent saw it. Right, he gets the stat from the love tab and he heals back up to full due to his own region. This is brilliant. Now we just need to find a, another unit or two to get some more drain and we're good to go. <laughs> and that's the moment they realize they effed up. Although... Open attack's pretty good, right? If MF doesn't block Vladimir, I can almost go for lethal. Transfuse? A double transfusion doesn't make sense though, but would be very close. The other players whispered words. I mean, we can whisper words anyway. We'll still have mana for one transfusion and the second one doesn't make sense. Okay, no unit. Gotta work with what we got. Ah, no blockers is a bit sad neither. Opponent has a lot of swarm now. Okay, but Ice Shard takes out two. Only Crack Shot goes through. It's not too bad. Wait, can we find... Oh, we're so close to a, a tricky lethal off of Disciple. We need to proc it three times. Ice Shard is one, MF is a second time, and the block is a third, actually. And Ice Shard is the fourth damage, so if we double transfuse onto this and Ice Shard, I think we have lethal. Let's go this through again. Okay, double transfuse, you're at 5 HP. Ice Shard next is at 3. MF passive 1. Ice Shard 2. Unit hits 3. Yeah, GG. Oh, what a sneaky lethal at 4 HP. This has got to be a beauty.
gorgeous. Disciple hyper carry, let's go. <laughs> opponent kind of killed themselves in a way there with all of those ping effects. Hmm. That seems to be getting more popular. I wonder why. Okay, I shared for Timo, but they do have the token. Still, it's my only real way of dealing with Timo. Apart from that, look for Scargrounds, look for Omenhawk. Only the best of Teemo players will have the attack token on turn 1 and have Teemo in hand. Hmm. Like, I kinda... Okay, it's not the version I posted, at least. Might be the one that Sunny posted recently. Um... My issue with passing there is, like... A, it's scuffed mana management-wise, because I have to play Ice Shard and Scargrounds in the same turn. No mana left, it takes a while to get my, my board rolling. The second one is I also have Troll Chant open, if my opponent should be able to level Teemo. Yeah, should be better than Troll Chant here. It's a bit slow. Maybe I just let this go through. Play Skyground so I can play into Braum. Set up my own development. This might be... Ugh, tempted to play Ember Maiden. But then all of my units die as well. A subsequent turn. Yeah, the open attack is too good if I play Skargrounds. Gotta play it a bit cautiously for a second or two. Yeah, I feel like maybe I just shouldn't have taken, like, the Ice Shard on turn 3. I don't think I had Ember Maiden in hand at that time, I don't quite remember. But just Scargrounds into Ember Maiden would have been a very effective way of dealing with everything. Now we found a great window of opportunity to play Scargrounds. Funny thing is, Caitlyn Traps would actually benefit us at this point. But... Don't have any in our deck. <laughs> I think our opponent doesn't realize they would die anyway. Man, I can only say it over and over again. The, the, the level of plays on Platinum... Off it surprises me. And drone's really good. That's a lot of mana you're wasting, dear friend. See, two mana versus six mana. We go up four mana, but we lose an attack token. Is that worth it? Do we need to push the five damage? I think I like to develop Braum first. Like, the attack token has value to us because our opponent is gonna passively win through puff caps eventually. 
So we're the ones that are technically on a clock and need to get active. So if we get proactive here, it's more likely we win on our next swing. If I would have clicked end rounds, it's somewhat likely we get more attack tokens over the course of this game. Okay, now my opponent seems to have realized how this works. Interesting. Only counts as two traps for Caitlyn, though. So they need some ping effect. Ice Shard top deck would be amazing. Or Vladimir. Vladimir! <laughs> we'll take it. Jeez, chill out. Oh, Caitlyn is almost lethal now. Wait, no, it's just two traps, right? Isn't this bugged? Equal to the number of your traps activated this round. But it was only two traps because... Oh, okay, it doesn't say damage on traps is activated, but the traps are doubled. Okay, yeah, that's fair, then it's still kind of makes sense in its own way. Oh, perfect. Let's go. On average, we're dead here. But only because we kind of heavily low rolled with drawing two puff caps multiple times in a row in the first place. <laughs> Jeez Louise. How dare you, Vladdy, mode me? The audacity on this kid. The audacity. This could be a full keep. Pretty nice hand on curve. Sure thing. This is gonna get more value if it chumps blocks some um, chump blocks as something later. So might make more sense to play Blood Letter. Scargrounds on three, then we can proc Braum immediately on turn four. Already give him one attack. Disciple could also trade. I think I like the cheeky line though. Give Braum attack. Remove something, also be able to swing with a Poro, maybe. Okay, no snap job, no development, that's really good for us. That basically buys us the time here at this turn to play Scargrounds. So Hawk probably blocks this. So that Brom can pick it off next turn, and we let this go through. to attack so far. Really? That's hot. Like, how's that? <laughs> how's that ever worth it? I know it disrupts my play, but it does disrupts my opponent's own play as well.
So we know this is uh, the uh, shark link and this is whatever my opponent predicted before the caller. So this was the predicted card. Yep, that was it. Maybe Veteran is the best choice. I'm not sure if I need both Transfusion and Elixir. Don't think my opponent can threaten Braum this turn. In this case, Veteran is probably better. Still need to draw the second Omen Hawk buffed card. Because they can threaten Braum. It'd definitely be worth protecting. So transfuse from Veteran onto Braum. This blocks uh, the Caller if it swings. Troll Chant would be pretty effective as well, but Transfusion will do. It's pretty good here. Guaranteeing the Lurk, okay. And we know the top card is a Snapjaw. So go here, here. And Braum is gonna be stacked. He's gonna have so much attack. And he's leveling. Nice. Alright, and now he can carry us. So already at four attack once transfusion wears off. It's only gonna get growing. We know Snapjaws on top of the deck. Let's play Disciple, keep Ice Shard open. Perfect. Now it allows us to pick off something even bigger. Full swing worth it. Probably. I mean, we're spawning Poros anyway. We don't really need the veteran buff anymore. And we do want to make sure we close out the game on our next attack. Otherwise, like, pikes and jawfish can become scary. Leave that board space open for a potential extra. A mighty Poro. Don't want Braum to get damaged because Titan Pull is coming in. Also with the Lyric. Feels good. Oh, I might have actually messed up. I'm not getting lethal on the open attack right now. Hmm. Still fine, but maybe I should have... How could I have done a block with Braum, get a Poro? Let Braum trade into the Titan... Replay the Omen Hawk. Yeah, that would probably would have been slightly better, but we should be winning here anyway. I mean, if you play Preservarium and Lurk, you deserve to miss it. <laughs> Maiden's perfect with the Disciple. <laughs> oh no! What do I do now? This is exactly two damage. 
All right, we protect the carry. Just because he deserves it. He's done so much for this game.